All right, guys, and uh, now to talk a little bit about a war history of Indonesia in the 20th and 19th century. I have my buddy Ben who knows quite a little bit about war. So Ben, take it away. Sure, just uh, yeah, things we were sort of discussing in passing, but this country has a lot more of a uh, military history than let's say Malaysia. Well, apart from the emergency, but you know, more recent military history, um, but something sort of not mentioned too much. Everything around here is all about the Republic and, and uh, Sukarno, the first uh, Prime Minister. But um, something less mentioned is in 1965, there was a massive sort of purge here of, of left-wing people and, and communists and largely Chinese. And uh, what happened is basically Sukarno was sort of losing power. It was as, as Nick has mentioned many times, this is a massive country, very, very spread out with lots and lots of people. And so as being a newly independent nation, it was a little bit easier when the Japanese were sort of ministering things. But then, of course, when they lost the war, left Indonesia in a sort of precarious position. So Sukarno was doing pretty well at um, managing all the different ideologies and ethnic groups, but uh, didn't really politically but everyone was still very much in poverty and there was really no way to to easily lift them out of that so he started going down a sort of more socialist route thinking that, that those sorts of policies would be able to save everybody and um, obviously with the advent of the Cold War that became a little bit problematic and uh, as time went on different factions started to, to form so eventually, well, I, have to, I have to get my thoughts together. Yeah, so different ideologies started to form, and so as time went on, uh, Sukarno tried to sort of be friendly with the US and the Eastern Bloc countries, because Indonesia being such a new nation, um, trying to sort of flirt with both sides and have the best negotiating position, if you will. But in, in effect, he was way closer with the Chinese and the Eastern Bloc countries and the Soviets than he ever was with the Americans and so that started to uh, piss certain people off and then eventually in 1965 um, there was a, a group of arm basically to maintain his power he teamed the, the, so there was a communist party of Indonesia that was started here um, around the end of World War One and it became the largest like two million people or something the largest communist party in the world that wasn't like a ruling party so obviously the communist party of all the eastern bloc countries had massive membership but that was official but this was not in any positions of power but a massive communist party and so he made an alliance with basically them and the indonesian air force to maintain control of all these different populations basically and that further alienated the army so the army basically became divided between left-leaning officers and right-leaning officers and um, in 1965 the 30th of September movement it was called tried to stage a coup so they killed six of the right wing leading officers and then that sparked like but they did, didn't manage to take over the government and so that sparked like a major uh, purge and so the army basically spearheaded that and um, killed the estimates are like 500,000 to 1.2 million is the most accepted, which is a big gap. And some people say as many as two to three million. But the army came through and killed uh, everyone they considered a communist or a communist sympathizer. And then Suharto took over. And so he reigned for 31 years until like 1998, I think, as, as a dictator of Indonesia. So something, it's not that long ago, something we don't really think about. But uh, yeah, no, it was a major, major purge in, in the 60s. And, the legacy of which is still, I'm sure, felt by many families here today. Based. Hey Ben, can you tell us more about the uh, also the pre-war two history? Because I know that Indonesia was a colony of Dutch guys, Dutch Empire for quite a bit. So what, how, what was that whole thing about? Yeah, it was similar to um, Malaysia. The Portuguese arrived and then the Dutch arrived in I think 1611. And then of course the British arrived in the 1800s, but it was a Dutch colony for a long, long time, from basically 1611 until, I guess, 1940. Well, 1940, if you count the Japanese invasion, but 1945. But that was sort of an interesting end to the 
colonialism because unlike Malaysia where it was a fairly peaceful pro well peaceful process in terms of them against the colonizer breaking with the British it was much more uh, bloody here and uh, the Japanese did a similar thing as Malaysia sort of took over the country but promoted like a Asia for Asians and Indonesia for Indonesians type idea like fight off the, the European colonizer but then of course they lost so the Dutch tried to come back because as far as the Allies were concerned it was still like legitimately a Dutch colony and the Japanese occupation was illegitimate um, but then of course they declared independence towards the end of the war so it was like August 1945 it was right basically during the time that the bombs were dropped in Japan and Japan was um, about to surrender and so in his Declaration of Independence it says that like the Japanese are our allies and all these greater Asian peoples and whatnot. And then so they fought a four year insurgency war, basically, the Indonesian National Revolution with the Dutch. And um, it was militarily the Dutch did pretty well, obviously they were a little bit better equipped, so to say, and obviously, but still they had just um, gotten over being occupied themselves back in Europe. So it was a little bit complicated to say the least but eventually the UN and the Americans pressured the Dutch to give Indonesia their independence basically the UN just didn't want another war going on so long after World War II and the Americans were like okay they're not overtly communist so if we can have another sort of neutral or right-leaning country uh, in in the Cold War world that'd be fantastic so eventually they got their independence in 1949 and that's their Republic of Indonesia we see today Man, but there's a lot of people that died, right? Like, unlike Malaysia, like, how, do you know yeah. rough estimates how many I, Indonesians? I can't remember exactly, but a lot. Okay. It was a fairly bloody war. And, of course, it, at where we are now, Yogyakarta was the capital of, as far as, like, Indonesian government. Because they declared independence in Jakarta, but obviously was still controlled, like, entirely by the Dutch. So they, the Indonesian government made the capital Yogyakarta while the war was going on. And then um, Sukarno moved to Jakarta, the palace we saw. Um, in 1948 or 9, 9 I think. Interesting. Grazie.